this video is to introduce the miniature golf project um, that we're doing along with chapter one. Okay. Now, before I introduce the project and what we're actually doing in the project, I wanted to explain something about science. Okay. I looked for a YouTube video that really just, um, showed this really well. I couldn't find one, um, so I built a geometry sketchpad file to kind of just talk about this idea. Okay. Um, if this is some kind of a wall. Okay, and a ball, like a golf ball, came along this path. Okay, it would bounce off the wall. Okay, so here's my here's my golf ball. Um, it came and bounces off the wall. It would actually bounce along this line. Okay, and in science, uh, we would call this angle down here the angle of incidence. Okay, and this angle up here would be called the angle of reflection. Okay, and the thing you need to know about the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection is that they're congruent. Okay, they're equal. So whenever, however the ball hits the wall, it'll bounce off so that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, so if I move this, however I move this, however the ball hits the wall, this angle, the angle of incidence, will be the same as the angle of reflection. Okay, now that's important to us because in our miniature golf project, we'll be hitting a golf ball so it bounces off of some walls, and you need to be aware that the angle of incidence is congruent to the angle of reflection. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is to, to give some example problems. This is actually the project that Ms. Swanlin and I used last year. Okay, but your project will be a little bit different. Okay, and I'm going to solve some of these in real time, meaning I don't know what the exact answer is, uh, but I'll kind of talk through how I would solve this. Okay, so this down here is the hole where, um, sorry, not the hole, the, where, the, where the ball starts, okay? Up here with the flag is where I want the ball to go, okay, the hole. Now, the easiest thing would be to hit it right into the hole, okay? But unfortunately, I'd have to be going through a wall, okay? So I have to find some way to bounce it off of walls um, to, to find out the answer, okay? Now, there's two ways to go about it. One way is to kind of shoot it up this way, and I don't know exactly where it should go, but somewhere around here, so it bounces and goes in. Okay, now just looking at this, I was a guess, but this angle, the angle of incidence, should be the same as the angle of um, reflection. Okay, and I'll go ahead and measure that with a protractor, just to kind of see if, I, if I'm anywhere close. Okay, so on the angle of incidence, looks like it's around 75 degrees. Okay, and the angle of reflection, I can't really see. So I'll draw this a bit longer. The angle of reflection looks like it's about 74 degrees. Okay, now that's pr close enough. Okay, because even if I knew the exact spot to shoot for on um, the wall, I may not actually hit it. So, uh, but that's that's the good spot to to shoot for um, to to find an answer. Okay, now another answer could be. Uh, now that's that's one solution. I could leave that one there and and be fine. Um, another way to do it, now there, there's more than one answer, okay, is to somehow shoot it off of this wall. Okay, now I don't know what the answer is, but the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Okay, now I, I missed, and I, I maybe could hit that spot and um, have a two-bounce solution, but um, if I'm going to find a solution, I want the fewest number of bounces because it's um, a better chance of me actually making it. So if I shoot it this way... Um, the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of um, reflection. Okay, I still missed. Okay, it's going to take a couple of tries before you find um, one where it works. Let's try. Um, you should know if you can hear. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Now that might be. That one actually might actually work. Let me kind of just see that how that one works. Um, I can't really tell this angle. Okay, let me kind of measure this. Angle of incidence, about 40 degrees. The angle of reflection, let me kind of make it so it's straighter, is about, about 39 degrees. That's pretty close. Okay, so either one of these answers, this one or the one I drew before, would be a fine answer. 
okay? Um, let me do just one more so you get an idea, okay? Um, this one down, well, let me, let me do this one, this one down here. This one's a little more challenging, okay? Um, this one's designed so that you can't make a one-bounce solution, okay? There's no way that I can kind of hit the ball this way so that I get a one-bounce answer, okay? And I couldn't even hit this way, um, this way and get an answer. So um, it's got to be at least two bounces. Angle of incidence, it's the same as the angle of reflection. I'm just sketching it out this the first time until I think I have something close. Okay, that's that's not going to work. So maybe I need to do it a little um, a little steeper. Okay. Um, now I, again, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just going to sketch out a couple of guesses until I get something that I think is kind of close. And then I'll measure it to see how close I am and kind of adjust from there. Okay, but the important thing you're keeping in mind is the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Okay, that one might be might be kind of close. Let me kind of just measure this. Um, this is about it's backwards. This one is about sixty-five-ish degrees. Sixty-five degrees, and it bounces off about sixty, which means I should have actually bounced off more, like here. Okay, sixty-five degrees. It'll come in again at sixty-five degrees, the same angle, and so it'll bounce off at sixty-five degrees, which means that my sketch before wasn't quite accurate. Okay. Now I, I could keep going with this and, and keep trying some more, but I think you get the idea that you just you just try a couple, um, keeping in mind that the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Okay, and you try a couple until you have one that's close, and then you try that more solid. Okay, and that's that's uh, some example where you're given the whole. Okay, let me actually pull up now what the miniature golf project is. And show you. Okay, now if you don't. Um, you can get this either on SharePoint. Miss um, um, Swan and I both have copies of, of this um, this paper. If you want to actually get the paper, okay. Um, miniature golf and billiards are two real-world situations where um, that use geometric concepts of angles. Okay, the project is to design a five-hole mini golf course where you design what the holes are um, and also what the what the solutions are. Okay, um, you so if you've ever gone miniature golfing, you'll know that there's different obstacles. There's there's ramps, there's tunnels, there's um, you know some some waterways that bridges that go over. So you can kind of be creative with this and find and make some some um, some holes that are creative. Okay, so like I just demonstrated, you begin with a pencil and straight edge. Um, you can also try some curve. There's a picture at the very bottom that talks about how to deal with a curve. Um, and there may not be any direct shot um, solutions. So there may not be any direct shot um, solutions. Okay. So there has to be at least one bounce. Um, I probably put some in that have more than one bounce. Just to make things interesting. Okay. Um, once you finish with that, you now need to show um, a precise hole-in-one shot. So so kind of getting an idea of how it might work with the angle of incidence being the same as the angle of reflection. Okay, so you design five holes and you have um, closing clear the five holes and the solutions um, and it requires some guesswork. You need to kind of guess how it might be first until you have a solution, um, an answer that, that may work. Okay, um, you must draw the measures of um, you must draw and measure the angles of incidence. So um, like I kind of measured it, and I just said it out loud when I was kind of going through it. Um, on your solution, you need to actually write in what the measurements are of the angle of reflection and angle of, um, sorry, angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Okay. Um, now, this, these are the two angles that I want to see. Um, I'm okay if you don't show these. 
Okay, but those two, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, need to be written on and measured with a protractor. Okay, now if you want to be creative and have a curved surface, okay, now I didn't really highlight that because we haven't really talked about tangent lines. I won't, I may not talk about tangent lines until the very end of the year, okay, but if you want a curved path, as there are some curved paths in miniature golf, okay, um, you need to draw what's called a tangent line. Okay, and a tangent line is a line that touches a curve at exactly one point, okay, um, and that point is where the ball will enter, will hit. So if, if this ball comes and hits this curve at this point, then I draw the tangent line at that point, okay? And you can almost think about that being the wall, okay? So my angle of incidence and my angle of um, reflection um, off that tangent line is what I'm measuring, okay? So that keep that in mind if you want to have some curved um, walls in your solution. Okay, um, on the back of that page, you have um, the actual rubric, um, the design, the hole in one. I'll let you read through that as far as the rubric. But I hope that this is a good introduction to the miniature golf project. You just be creative. Um, design five holes um, and the solutions, measure the angles, um, and then, you know, make sure that the color and design um, and, and the design all meets um, this rubric because we'll be using this rubric to, um, to grade it.